everyone, and welcome to the new series, From Ashes to a New Beginning, written by Stacey Holt. Artwork was by Pastel Kitty Gore Art on Instagram, otherwise known as Maddie Kitty 1997 on Divian Art. I highly recommend you go check out her artwork. I will also leave everyone that is collaborating within this chapter, which are Adrian and Cat Noir will be voiced by Shane, I will be voicing Marinette and the narrator, Alia will be voiced by Ashton, Calvin will be voicing Gabriel and Hawk Moth, Maddie will be voicing Tiki, Brad will be voicing Tom, and M will be voicing Sabine. If you'd like to support the series, you can like, subscribe, and comment. Now, Chapter 3 Roommates. Bye! I'll see you guys Monday! Marinette waved. Bye! Text me if you need anything. Anything! I mean it. I'll be there. Alia waved. Marinette laughed and turned to see Adrian beside her, which caught her off guard. She still wasn't used to having him lingering around her. She smiled awkwardly and saw him smile back. Ready to go? He asked. Uh, sure, she said. Let me text my mom and dad. You don't have to. My father and Natalie already had them come over this morning and had them get settled in. They're probably already there, Adrian said. Uh, oh, all right, Marinette said following him to his car. Adrian got in his car and unlocked the doors, letting Marinette inside the passenger seat beside him. She sat inside of it and looked around. It was nicer than anything she ever thought she would sit in. The car was probably more than her college tuition. Seatbelt. He smiled. Oh, sorry, she said, putting her seatbelt on and seeing him start the car up. Not long after, they started driving toward his home that he grew up in. Adrian pulled into the driveway and parked. Getting out, he opened the door for Marinette. They made their way up to the porch and made their way inside. Memories of the past started to flood through her mind as she walked into the foyer. Let me go see where you'll be staying. Sit tight. Adrian smiled. All right, Marinette said, seeing him dart off toward Gabriel's office. She could hear distant talking where Adrian had gone, and she stood awkwardly in the foyer alone. Are you all right, Marinette? Tiki whispered. I'm all right. For now. She whispered back. I'm glad you're safe. Tiki smiled. Marinette smiled and nodded at her friend, but closed her purse when she heard footsteps coming closer. Adrian, Gabriel, Sabine, and Tom all came walking into the foyer to meet Marinette. Mr. Agrest, thank you for letting us stay in your home, Marinette said as politely as she could. Gabriel smiled and nodded. It was nothing. Anything for an old friend of Adrian. Though, we do have a problem. He said with a concerned face. Marinette turned to face Sabine and Tom, who also had worried faces. We only have one spare room with one bed, Gabriel said. I, uh, could sleep in the middle? Marinette suggested. Marinette? Honey? Sabine sighed. Marinette can stay in my room. She can stay in my bed, father. I can sleep on the couch I have. Adrian spoke up. You would sleep on the couch. Gabriel raised an eyebrow. Yeah, Marinette and her family have been through so much. It's the least I can do. Adrian smiled. Is that all right with you, Mr. Dupain and Mrs. Cheng? Gabriel asked, turning to look at them. They are adults. Marinette, are you all right with that? Sabine asked, everyone turning to look at Marinette. Marinette's mind went blank. What was she supposed to say? No, that's weird to sleep in someone else's bed? No, because you're basically kicking someone out of their bed to sleep on the couch? No, so let's go sleep on the streets until they find somewhere else to live? Ugh. Uh, yeah, that's fine with me, as long as Adrian is alright with it. She smiled awkwardly. Yeah, that's fine. Adrian smiled cheerfully. Then it is decided. Adrian, please show Marinette to your room so she can settle in and maybe take her shopping for new items since her things burned in the fire. Gabriel said. Adrian nodded, motioning for Marinette to follow him. Marinette followed him, though still felt a little out of place and uncomfortable. But who wouldn't? Mr. and Mrs. Dupain Cheng, Natalie will help you find anything you need. She will also help you start finding listings in your price range, as well as let you know when dinner is ready. Gabriel said, turning to leave. Thank you, Mr. Agrest. We really do appreciate everything you've done for us. Tom said, smiling. Don't mention it, he said, 
disappearing into the next room. Adrian opened the door and led Marinette into his room. It was still spacious as she remembered, though he had grown up. He no longer had a basketball court in his room or a foosball table. He had video games hooked up to his TV as well as a gaming PC. She didn't think he was such a hardcore gamer, but knew he liked games since he did come over to practice for that tournament that one time. His room was a lot more sophisticated. Adrian? Marinette said in a low whisper. Yeah? He asked, turning around to see her holding her arm as if she were uncomfortable, and it hurt him because he had to restrain himself to not go to comfort her like he wanted to do so badly. Um, you know how I had a balcony at my house? Marinette glanced down at her feet. Yeah? He said, confused. Is there any way to get on the roof? I know that sounds weird, but after the fire, I just like to... She said, feeling a little embarrassed. You're safe, Marinette, though I understand. Over here. Adrian smiled. Adrian led her to the windows and showed her a way up to the roof that she could easily get to safely. He watched as she sat on the roof and saw how at ease she seemed once she got there. Do you like sitting on roofs? Adrian laughed. I liked my balcony a lot, yes. She laughed back. She couldn't tell him that she was scared to get trapped inside again. She also couldn't tell him that she was hoping Cat Noir could find her there. She had no way of contacting Cat Noir and letting him know where she was. The last time she saw him was the last night after the fire. He was probably worried to death. She wanted Adrian to think it was her escape. She wanted him to believe that she loved being on the roof, so maybe it would be normal for her to be there, so maybe, just maybe, Cat Noir would see her and come to her and make her feel better. All she could do was hope. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, you can go check out some of my other videos like Thunderstorm, which is Season 1, Downpour, which is Season 2 of Thunderstorms, The Butterfly That Brought Us Together, and so on. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys!